Hello everyone, welcome back to Flight Sim, where I'm going to fly the F-14B from India Fox, Teco, and Heepler and see how far it can go on one tank of gas when I'm trying to push it past Mach 2. So we're going to go as fast as possible and see how far we get. I've plotted a course across the country and my expectation is that we're definitely not going to get across the country. But how many tanks of gas is it going to take to get across the country if we wanted to do that, assuming that we're going to go as quickly as possible? So, uh, is the F-14B this time with the Jolly Rogers livery? Uh, my second favorite livery, so my favorite is still with the F-14A, the 101, the USS Enterprise one. Uh, but we'll try this out, and hopefully I'll land it safely this time. Okay, so here we are at Miramar, and let's get to work here. Oh, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Cancel that. Um, let's see about our loadout. So there's the Jolly Rogers livery. Um, okay, it's, it's just those two tanks. I guess that's alright. Alright. So that's us looking spiffy. And fine. Now we can go. One hundred. Technically, to flying less shit than last time. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jester. Yes, that was pretty bad. Um, actually, the F-14 uses afterburner on takeoff. I think at least this version of the F-14. F-14. Uh, but I am not doing that for efficiency's sake. Positive climb. Gear up. Okay, and we are off. Performance seems to be better than last time. All right, that's us climbing. Fuel twenty thousand. I don't think the external tanks add drag in this case. Not sure, but I guess we'll find out whether we can't get to Mach two or not with these on board. Uh, I probably shouldn't be following that interstate. <laughs> that's Interstate eight. That is not right. We are not going the right way following that. Nice to follow a road though. Yeah, I don't know, the heading marker on that seems to be a bit off. Anyway, we're at 28,000 feet and I'm gonna go with the afterburner now. Got to climb dramatically. Looking good. Midway through California right now. That's the Salton Sea in front of us. 37,000 feet right now. Past Mach 1. I'm surprised uh, Jester doesn't say anything about that. Fuel 18,000. He says that. Guzzling fuel pretty quickly right now. We're not gonna get far like this. Must go faster and higher. 53,000 feet. Ground speed 900 knots right now. 60,000 feet. Fuel 16,000. Well, briefly at 60,000 feet, we need to accelerate a bit. So we dip down somewhat. Now 1,000 knots ground speed. Well, that's the Colorado River back there, so we are now over Arizona. Back to 60,000 feet. Mm -hmm. 
Mach 1.8 ish. Okay, so not quite Mach 2 yet. Mach 1.9 something. Ground speed about 1,150 knots. 61,500 feet in climbing. Climbing to get that nice efficiency, of course. I am using little nav map to help me navigate, by the way, just for you to know if you wanted to know how I was getting the ground speed and stuff like that. And in this view, I know I still know my height because of that. It's uh, approaching 64,000 feet right now. And if we can get to 65,000 feet, I think we'll basically have an hour worth of fuel at this speed. So that would be good. Though it's finicky. I don't actually know if there's unusable fuel. And we do need some for landing and everything. So I need to be careful this time. I don't want to crash again. We're nearly at Mach 2 here. Oh, we're going down a bit. Yeah, basically Mach 2, 1,177 knots ground speed. Uh, fuel 14,000. Yep, you heard Jester, fuel 14,000. So, we should be right over Phoenix. Well, there it is, thereabouts. Just approaching it. 66,000 feet right now. Might, might be overdoing it. We're losing speed somewhat like this. feel like 65,000 feet is a good place. Continuing to pass Phoenix. Will it automatically load the next waypoint or do I have to tell Jester? We are at steer point one. Okay, well then, fine. Jester, give me steer point two then. Switching to steer point two. Thank you. I may make this flight part of a flight around the world. You know, if I don't crash, it'll be part of a flight around the world. We'll see. I mean, it's been enjoyable so far. It's not fidgety. It's not doing anything crazy, and it seems to have a decent amount of range. Very important qualities in a plane. I wonder if I can get across the Atlantic without using the Greenland, Iceland... Fuel 13,000. ...whole business. Let me go to the South Atlantic. But could there be enough islands to help me out down there? That's a good question. A well-placed carrier down there would be great. Right in the middle of the Atlantic, between Brazil and Africa. So I'm keeping slightly below Mach 2 here, right at Mach 2 maybe. It's very stable, I haven't been tempted to turn on the rudimentary autopilot. Now while people have been lavishing praise on this, and rightly so, it's not actually what I would consider the ideal plane for flight sim. Um, and also there's the DCS world version of the Heepler F-14 that uh, we have to compare to. The ideal plane for flight sim as far as I'm concerned is actually the India Fox Echo F-35 and that's because you can cover the large distances very quickly with it but also then hover around and sightsee because flight sim is ultimately a sightseeing thing and so it's nice to be able to you know go into hover mode and take a look at stuff uh, even though it guzzles fuel quite quickly and of course it's still got the decent quality that uh, India Fox Tickle brings to things. So I like the F-35 better for flight sim in general, though obviously the interior here is much more detailed, the exterior quality of the textures is very, very good, and all that. Uh, it has good looks, but the functionality, as far as what we actually do in flight, flight sim, I like 
the functionality of the F-35 better. Still hanging out at 66,000 feet. Still looks like we've got basically an hour's worth of gas. Based on what I have here in uh, Little Nav Map. Little Nav Map keeps track of the fuel as well. Ground speed is 1,181 knots. So yeah, we're, we're doing better than I thought. Not unreasonably though. I mean, we are carrying the two external tanks, or have carried the two external tanks. And... The range is supposed to be 1,600 nautical miles. This is according to Wikipedia. So, 1,600 nautical miles, well, maybe we'll make that, hopefully. Fuel 12,000. Though I don't think that that range was indicated for Mach 2, but then again, engines that can go to Mach 2 tend to be very efficient at being at Mach 2, too. So, no easy river to show us this, but we are crossing into New Mexico now. Head towards true for consequences. I had to look up why it's called true for consequences, and it turns out that in 1950 they chose to rename themselves this little town of about 6,000 uh, to uh, uh, to true for consequences after the radio show by that name. Still trucking at Mach 1.95 ish, 67,000 feet. Okay, so that's a real grand down there, and we are approaching True for Consequences. Okay, well, we're not going right over the waypoint, so I wonder if Joe, uh, Jester is going to tell me when we go past it. Uh, I think it is beyond his tolerances. We did go past it there. Okay. Next. Can we just have a next waypoint? Switching to steer point three. It's got to be a way for me to manually switch the waypoints. I forget where that is. Inlet ice. Hmm. That's an interesting warning. Somebody told me about the inlet ramps. Probably when I was trying to start the engine, I accidentally hit those. Um, but they're in the right position now. Anti-ice? Let's turn on anti-ice then. Well, we're over White Sands Missile Range. Let's take a look. I think to our right is the White Sands part of White Sands, though all of this that we're flying over is technically part of the missile range. Switching to fixed point. Okay, maybe that was what I wanted. Alright, we are heading on towards Texas. Still, I think we're basically at Mach 2 now. 67,000 feet, no deviations, very stable. 1,187 knots ground speed. Still about half of our fuel, I think. Can we get through Texas? I think so. But Texas is big. <laughs> Texas is very big. Yeah, I think I might be able to cross the South Atlantic from Brazil to Mexico. I, I'm thinking that that's possible. So that would be good. Uh, change of pace from the normal route, the North Atlantic route. I don't know whether I'm going to have to stop at an island along the way or we can go directly across. There is an island available. SBFN is the airport. That'll cut our trip down by about 200 nautical miles. There's other islands too. 
so yeah in that case I'll make this part of a world trip and we'll actually go down the Caribbean I think the Caribbean is the next world update I'm not sure though uh, I'll have to double check on that but that probably isn't coming up soon enough for me to take advantage of it for the trip we do have a 65 knot tailwind so that's been helping out gotta keep that in mind if I'm gonna use this flight to plan any long trips okay we are now in Texas heading towards Midland well we're not gonna get a good look at Midland uh, there's clouds but it's under there somewhere As we get lighter, we're going a little bit faster. Switching to surface target. No, oh, okay, switching to surface target worked this time. Whatever it takes to get me my next waypoint. About half an hour left going at full speed. After that, we'll definitely have to go down. And maybe a little bit earlier if we want to be safe about it just in case there's some uh, unusable fuel involved sixty eight thousand feet now we've sort of drifted up along the way oh we're actually a bit above Mach 2 now again because we're getting lighter Joker. Fuel's Joker, he said. We're still over Texas, of course, and we'll be passing by Austin soon, but now we're going at 1,228 knots ground speed and nearly 69,000 feet. Or 70,000 feet now. Definitely 70,000 feet. There it is. 70,000 feet inching towards Mach 2.1 I'm looking at trying to land at New Orleans I think um, KNBG 1,300 knots now and 73,000 feet hmm we're uh, really getting up there huh Mach 2.2 again because we're so light got about 15 minutes of fuel left at this speed and with the afterburner on. Now the clouds clearing up out there. Well, a little bit there. We're approaching Houston. 1,360 knots. Well, we're, we're, uh, we should be below bingo fuel by now, right? We're bingo. Thank you. <laughs> I thought so. I've got a master caution back here. 76,000 feet. We are approaching Mach 2.3 and approaching Houston. Well, uh, once we pass Houston, I'll start descending and cut the throttle a bit. I don't know how far we can go after that. 1,400 knot ground speed. 76,000 feet. Pushing it a bit. <laughs> so maybe some hopes uh, with it are a little bit optimistic. Definitely can do more than 1,200. I think I could stretch it to 1,600 if we're careful and really hit some optimal point. Uh, but I do want to land it properly this time. So now that we are bingo fuel, let's try and do something proper with it. Reduce speed. Yeah, oh, there's that too. We're at Mach 2.5. Mach 2.5, folks. Thought you should know. Um, 
no, turn off the afterburner. There we go. We have turned off the afterburner. Not 2.4 and decreasing. I don't actually need need to go down. We'll see. Fuel flow is substantially reduced. Let's take full advantage of our great height here. Well, I uh, had too much activity while passing by Houston. It's back there. And the clouds have cleared, that's good. Okay, we're descending and at 64,000 feet now. Below Mach 2. It really holds on to its speed rather well considering I don't have the afterburner on right now. Maybe I can give it some afterburner for a bit. Uh, I reconsider that actually. Not a good idea. It is quite a lot of fuel consumption. I think we only have 10 minutes left if we turn on the afterburner. If we're still above Mach 1 when we pass New Orleans, I'll try and get to Pensacola. We are over Louisiana now. Ground speed about to dip below 1,000 knots and we are below 60,000 feet. 55,000 feet, we're at Mach 1.5-ish. Still a little bit of a ways to New Orleans. But I think we can pass it and try for Pensacola, though I might regret it. Oh, there's New Orleans right there. All right, we're below 50,000 feet now, just below 50,000 feet. Ground speed 810 knots. We are still above the speed of sound. So I'll try to get to Pensacola, which is 144 nautical miles from New Orleans. Well, from KNBG in particular. It all comes down to whether there's unusable fuel or not. We are down to 2,700 pounds, it says. We're at full throttle without afterburner, military thrust, and uh, about half an hour left, assuming there's no unusable fuel. So that's certainly not bad, since we're going above 800 knots still. But I'm guessing there's unusable fuel. It's just a matter of how much. There's Joint Reserve Base New Orleans. Yeah. We could have landed there. So apparently Jester occasionally points out uh, certain bases. Interesting. I mean, it's not exactly super cruising because I am descending through this, but it's very close to super cruising. Wouldn't be able to do it with a full fuel load though, I don't think. So we're going to get a little bit of Mississippi, a little bit of Alabama, and then Florida, hopefully. 2,300 pounds of fuel. We are within 100 nautical miles of Pensacola. Six, still 42,000 feet, so... And getting there quickly. And still above Mach 1. We're at Mach 1.35 actually. Still not an afterburner right now. Gulf Coast. We're at 40,000 feet. 832 knots ground speed still. Oh, somewhere over there is Mobile, Alabama. And I better just go ahead and descend now and probably get below the sound barrier finally 
Well, I think I'm safe enough. We're uh, pretty high and pretty fast. We could probably go beyond Pensacola just a little bit, but I think it's safer to just stick to this plan now. Um, so I am going to cut throttle somewhat. Pensacola is 361 nautical miles away from Cape Canaveral, which is the final plotted point, so we can use that to judge how far we got. Okay, finally getting below the speed of sound. I'm gonna have to take a U-turn and come around. We're too fast to land at Pensacola right now. I mean, you can see the Naval Air Station right there. <laughs> we are definitely too high. So I'm gonna come around. I think we're at a low enough speed that the speed brakes will deploy properly. Nice clear day. Okay, gear down. Looking good. 900. 800. 700 feet. Great view of the Blue Angels home, NAS Pensacola. <laughs> now you got to comment on that? Thought you were calling out all the feet. Ah, I, I suddenly got knocked a little bit. Ah, 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 ah. A little bit of a shutter. And, whoa, a little bit wobbly. Okay. All right, we are down. I managed not to die this time. <laughs> oh, nose wheel steering. Uh, hopefully, one or one button or another does that. Uh, hold on, hold on. Inside. Oh, it, it took a while to light up. That's why. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess over here looks cozy. I'm just gonna park it off to the side here. This may be just one stop in a long flight around the world. So we'll just park it here and try and get a fuel truck over. Uh, but there we have it, got to Pensacola. So we're 361 nautical miles short of Cape Canaveral. And so let's see what the distance is. Maybe I can tally it up in a little nav map. Ah, uh, it's not showing me the distance here. Okay, so it's 1,931 nautical miles altogether from Miramar to the shuttle landing facility at Cape Canaveral. And we fell 362 short by landing at Pensacola. So we're talking about basically 1,600 nautical miles, which is what Wikipedia says is the range of the F-14. So it didn't specify, and I was flying the B, not the A. I don't know why it went back to the A, but um, yeah. So, but I again, I don't think they were expecting us to be going Mach 2 for most of the way. What does the logbook say as far as the timing? Okay, so uh, one hour and 38 minutes to cover about a little bit less than 1,600 nautical miles, 1,570. Okay, so that is the result. And so with that, I will say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.